At last, episode 8 is here. Now it's time for me to get my revenge on that little girl, Ray. Or, whine like a little bitch to my dead grandpa. Hello everyone, my name is Shrine, and today we're here to talk about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Yes, I finally got to see this movie, you know, after I had to dealing with all the, the, the hiding and avoiding the internet, like the bubonic plague, I finally got to see this movie. And, then, and to sum this up in one word, magnificent. Purely magnificent. But even magnificent has a few flaws in this movie. And I'll get that further into this review. Now, to start this off, now, I'm one of the people that enjoyed The Force Awakens. I understand from many uh, fellow Star Wars fans why they felt like it was just basically, uh, this is just uh, New Hope 2.0. I get that, but there was a lot of new stuff in that movie, and I understand from many perspectives that they had to please to the older Star Wars fans. Not so much as Star Wars fans like myself who are in my age bracket, but that's a different conversation and a different video altogether. Let's focus on the movie. Now, in order to uh, properly uh, address this re review, I personally had to talk about the director himself. The man who made this movie, the man who wrote it, and that is director Ryan Johnson. Uh, I became aware of Ryan Johnson's work uh, when I, uh, he did a little movie called Looper, and I was very curious how he's going to handle that typical, this typical sci-fi movie as opposed to that a slightly more grounded sci-fi movie like Looper. And, and he delivered. Like he himself, he said many times that he is a Star Wars fan like himself, so he understood certain things that he had to do. There was certain things, issues that I wanted to say, like for instance, I felt like that the movie was a little too long. More evolving with the B storyline, it could have been a lot more shorter or at least a lot more engaging. But let's talk about the good. I would say that Ryan Johnson did a fantastic job in, in filming this movie. I think he does a lot better job than what J.J. Abrams brought to the table. But it doesn't mean J.J. Abrams didn't uh, contribute anything to The Force Awakens. I think there were certain things that, uh, or at least in terms of uh, spectacle and action, that J.J. Abrams probably does a little better than Ryan Johnson. And I thought the shots that he chose were great. I love all, everything from the, uh, the parts of the island, you know, the parts that we see range. Ray going from some parts of training uh, to uh, Snoke's uh, throne room. I thought that was great. You know, the the, the whole introduction, even uh, how he found some way to make uh, the porgs, those little animals, um, not as annoying or just as a simple cash grab to convince uh, uh, parents to buy their kids uh, toys. But that that's a whole other conversation. And he did a fantastic job. Now... Now, there are certain things that I had an issue with uh, Ryan Johnson, and that is the, the lack of uh, epic battles. Something to to warrant that. Now, this is this is a very story-driven movie, but one of these that the Star Wars franchise is very known for, and that is epic battles between good and evil. Whether it's a big space battle over um, over the Death Star, or is it boots on the ground, ground fighting against um, the Separatists and all that. Uh, to me, the one thing that... That, that I had high hopes in this movie and I was hoping that this would not be the case that uh, some things that I had issue with uh, The Force Awakens and that is the epic lightsaber battles. As the, that's to me is the cream of the crop when it comes to Star Wars. The lightsaber battles, you know, that, that that's what is my fancy. That's what gets me up in the morning to see a new Star Wars story to come out and that's epic lightsaber battles. Now, let's just say there weren't any good lightsaber battles. What we got were very small and not exactly um, the cream of the crop, I would say. But I had to give it a lot of credit for Ryan Johnson for the fact how he directed those small lightsaber battles. And and they were great. He, took, he, he liked doing wide shots, which I prefer as well when it comes to uh, these epic fights. And that is, uh, show off the entire, entire landscape along with the characters. I love how he did the whole, the whole build up, the whole tension, you know, they're about to get ready to fight. And... And he did a great job. Like same thing. Like uh, assuming that he probably got this knowledge from you watching, you know, old black and white samurai films, or maybe he's familiar with certain anime properties. But I could tell it was certain anime properties because I am an anime fan. And one of the things I always liked about in terms of anime is how well they do sword fights. But this is a lot more grounded. And when it comes to the lightsaber battles that we are known for, for instance, the, pre the biggest highlights of the prequels has always been the flat, more flash here. We came to uh, George Lucas in the original trilogy. They were a lot more subtle, and J.J. Abrams decided to follow more in that vein to be a lot more subtle, and less flashy. 
I get that, but and then Ryan Johnson decided to follow that in the suit to be a little more grounded. And granted, I would love someone to come in and do a combination of the two. You know, at moments that we see um, uh, parts to be grounded, but at the same time, you need to show out that these guys are pretty much superhuman compared to um, normal people. Like, there's no way that. Um, What's the best way to describe that? The average person could go toe to toe with a Jedi unless, unless he or she himself is a, a Jedi or someone who is very privileged with the Force or is privileged with a lightsaber. But that's just me. Now, I want to talk about the characters in this movie because they, they are weren't. Uh, right. Now, let's start with Rey. Rey is the face of this new trilogy, uh, depending on who you ask. And I actually like Rey. I'm a fan of Rey. I know a lot of people accuse her to be a Mary Sue. Uh, in this movie, I had those feelings as well, more so than I did with uh, the than the Force Awakens. But those fears were put to rest. I love that Ryan Johnson made sure that that she is not um, some uh, one woman. All I can do everything, you know. I don't need some guy or blah blah blah. I love that, you know. She's. I love Daisy. Really did a very good job to making her very fun and likable. Uh, she's really she's very interested, more or less in a curious nature, to wanting to learn. Uh, she has her own fears and doubts as well, and a lot of questions that she's been trying to discover about who she is as a person, not just uh, her parentage or the fact that she could move objects with her mind or anything like that. And I thought that was very good. Now I move on to the guy and is my new favorite character in the Star Wars franchise, or at least in this new trilogy. He's my boy. Kylo Ren. The moment they show a picture of him wearing that mask and showing that cross guard lightsaber, I knew there was something truly special with this character. Just as Snoke said, send trailers. <laughs> and man, he he was awesome. I love how conflicted he was. You know, he still feels like he's being pulled to the light side, and that I loved how how fleshed out we're getting more. I can't say any more about this character because um, what has happened to him in this character will be. A, uh, a spoiler, and I don't want to give that away, but I can guarantee you that if you're a Colin Ryan fan like myself, uh, they they had not disappoint you one bit, and I cannot wait to see what they do next with him. Next, let's talk about Poe. Now, I actually like Poe. He's he's the fun character. He's definitely the new Han in this franchise, the new trilogy, and also he's supposed to represent uh, me and everyone who's part of the Latino community. And he was fun. The same thing as he, as he was in The Force Awakens. He had a great moment in the movie. Uh, I loved how he is he's still learning as to become not just uh, the hotshot fly boy. And I love that um, his interactions with Princess Leia, Leia was very good. I love that he is still learning from her. And even though he tends to do things in his own way, it, 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 it's a great addition to the, to the Star Wars lore. And I can't wait to see... Uh, Paul's story go further into into this trilogy. Now I want to talk about uh, Finn and Rose. Now to me, I like Finn. I am one of the people who will defend Finn as he is a great character, character in his own right. I to me thought he was a total badass when he stood up to Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens. He don't know he was going to get his ass handed to him, but I thought he was a great character. Uh, here it seems like um, like he he did have a great. St storyline as the B storyline but I feel like his B storyline didn't uh, amount to anything and to the to the overall f uh, film but I felt like the, there was a lot of untapped potential with him considering that A he used to be a former stormtrooper uh, even though he was more related to doing cleanup duty but I felt like that that his in interactions with Captain Phasma could have been a lot more more better now, Rose is a new addition to the star, brand new character to this movie and to the Star Wars franchise. And I thought uh, Rose was great. You know, she's uh, she's not too special. You know, she, we saw her basically uh, meet up with Finn and eventually they team up to help the Resistance and all that as trying to be more. And I love that her backstory to her character. I love how how she's not some um, total badass like Rey or like that. She was just an average girl trying to do her part for the Resistance. And I thought that was that was great about her. Now we need to talk about the big bad of this movie, and that is Supreme Leader Snoke. And granted, as much as I was very interested in this character, um, what little that we got from him 
and not to not to take away from the great performance that Andy Serkis gave in Arashi Kasha, but I thought that uh, the character was interesting and there's a lot of potential there, but but I am feeling that uh, uh, we won't get that much potential with this character unless we have to do a lot more homework on this character, which I for one in agreement that a film should not have homework. I shouldn't have to read like five different novels or to uh, to be excited for this character. That's why I always feel like uh, certain characters in the Star Wars lore, mostly by fellow Star Wars fans, like to uh, um, over exaggerate the, the importance or the uh, the appeal of certain characters based on what little information they have, and then decide to flush them out in a in a certain backstory just to make them a lot more interesting because fans like to, or more importantly, Star Wars fans like to deduct certain things. But granted, I thought, uh, thought that the CGI on Stunk's face looked very good. It looked like a real person whose face is defigured. I dined at the circus, as I said, did a great performance. He did make that character very uh, menacing, and I loved how how he pretty much was uh, was pretty much feared from uh, members of the First Order. So that was a very good thing, and I thought that uh, Ryan Johnson did a very good job of making that character have some sort of presence. Next, we need to talk about General Leia, or as many of us will still call her as, a princess. And I thought uh, Carrie Trish's final performance in this movie, I believe, technically is not really her final performance, um, but her role as Katerina's Princess Leia, or General Leia, was good. It was, uh, it was just as good as it was in The Force Awakens. Um, I can't say anything, but I love what we were expecting for I thought the moments that uh, she had in this film were very uh, emotional for me as well. I can't say anymore because uh, anti involving with Leia involves something uh, potential uh, reveals in the movie, but I can't say anything. Next, I say for the best for last, and that is Luke Munnerafing Skywalker, the true face of the franchise. You all people thought that Han, Han was the shit. Now Han is the man in my opinion, I love Han. But to me, I get excited and I jump on the down. The moment I see Luke Skywalker makes an appearance, whether or not he busts out that green lightsaber or not, uh, just having him on presence puts a smile on my face as Star Wars fans. I always loved Luke. He was great. I love him in Return of Jedi. Return of Jedi is my favorite movie of the Star Wars franchise. And and they did not disappoint. Now, granted, there were certain things I wanted more from uh, Luke Skywalker, but that's just me as a Star Wars fan, me as a Luke fan. You know, after uh, he came out of Return of Jedi, like the total badass that he that that he is, and in this movie they show that why he's a badass. In my opinion, it did not disappoint. I can't say anything more because I loved how um, because if I go further to this, it would be more in spoiler territory. But I felt like it was great. His interaction with Ray um, was great. Like how he maintains uh, some sense of sense of humor that Lucas um, somehow always has. And that Mark Collins is always good at doing, and I loved how that that we get those emotional elements to him, as well. You know, he, he, we feel the Skywalker's pain. You know, he's been around for thirty years, and and the stuff that has happened to him, and the situation that led us up to this point, we feel for that. And I thought Mike Hamill did a fantastic job, um, and I can't say any more. Final thoughts: This was a great addition to this the Star Wars franchise. I would say this is definitely better than, than The Force Awakens. Hands down, better than The Force Awakens. I can say that. But, as I said, there's flaws in this movie, but I highly recommend this. This is a great movie for any Star Wars fans to enjoy. You need to see this if you're a Star Wars fan. You know, you know, don't, uh, don't cheapen yourself by saying, oh, this is this, or where direction they decide to take this franchise. I thought it was very interesting. And you should definitely see this movie. Now, to wrap up this review, I usually give my movie score from a 1 from 10. So I'm giving my film score for Star Wars The Last Jedi an 8.7 out of 10. Well, that concludes my review. As always, thanks for watching this video, and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Bye.